Do you struggle to play Settlers of Catan? It's tough to find that one development, city, or road in a mess of tiny pieces. And all those cards just get so flingin' flingin' hard to hold. Don't you wish there was a better way? What's a bad way? Well, now there is! With the all new Settlers of Catan game piece and card holder fit for any player of any age. This is easy. No more fumbling through cluttered piles of pieces. Find that city in its designated place with no problem. Keep your hands free of that mess of cards and trade like a pro. Well, what's this? Yes, playing Catan has never been easier. But you don't have to take our word for it. This one is awesome. Order now! Hey, welcome to Do It. So I got a friend whose birthday is coming up and I gotta whip up a quick present. He loves playing Settlers of Catan and he found some pretty cool little holders. And today I'm gonna to show you how to whip up a batch but using three different methods. So whatever tool set you've got, whatever skill set you've got, you can make it happen. Let's go. I love using up my scrap whenever I can. So our material of choice today are these cedar cutoffs from fencing that I just got from a friend. Uh, for this first set over here, I am going to assume that all you've got is a jigsaw. Boom, so um, you'll see how that's going to happen here. Laminate those two. This, uh, these two have already laminated uh, face glued together. All right, so just under an inch thick, right about around an inch thick. Uh, this one we're going to pretend that you've got a drill press and a force and a bit and a table saw. See how that one goes. And then over here, we're going to employ uh, my very favorite shop assistant, Mr. CNC. First, let's clean up some of these faces on the planer. Next, I'm going to do the quick way of getting a couple smooth edges, and that's uh, just using the table slaw. Um, they're just short enough that I can reference enough of an edge against the fence that it won't, it doesn't shift. So the reference side being cut by the blade should be fairly straight. My layout for the set that's going to be drill pressed with a Forstner bit. Uh, all I did was do my best to center three two inch holes. I found the center point, but just for reference, I kind of drew out the one inch radius on each side to make sure I knew there was enough space in between them. Once I was comfortable with uh, something here, I just transferred the same distances over to this side. Setting a depth stop. It's really helpful in a project like this to make sure that you can't go further down than you really want to. Before moving ahead to making the slots behind the holes, I just took a little scrap piece of 2x4 and did a couple slots to kind of figure the depth and uh, what occurred to me, maybe the angle. So the furthest one back here is the first attempt I did. Nothing special, just a straight zero degree angle. Not a big fan of how they could potentially lean forward. Right, because I mean, a lot of times your head's going to be above the cards, and if they lean forward like that, it's they can lean back, but you got to push them. So for this next one, the one in front, I added a slight little seven and a half degree angle. I also went a little shallower. Didn't realize they didn't have to quite sit so deep. Uh, and this time, I'm like, could they potentially sit forward? 
yes, but it would take a pretty weird circumstance. So these are almost guaranteed to lean just slightly back, just barely. Um, and yeah, that one fit pretty good. So that's the setting I'm going to go for. Here we go. Ah, the joys of video making. Totally forgot to hit record. But uh, I'm sure you've seen a table saw run before. Ran those two slots, about a 7.5 degree angle. That's how it looks with cards in it. Not too shabby. And the next one, I might prefer there to be a bigger gap. I almost left too much of a margin on the back side. Slightly more gap between these two, or an offset between these two slots. Might allow you to see the back row of cards better. So say if you're this line of sight, it's tougher to see the suit. So try that next time. But pretty good. Quick rundown of the digital design layout for the CNC process. Parts that are highlighted here represent where the tool will cut. So we've got three holes, all at a 0.7 of an inch depth. This line represents just a quick profile. An eighth of an inch bit will pass directly centered on. So if you want to see the actual preview, so six pocketed holes, the exact same size, slightly different spacing. They're just a smidge tighter together on these uh, just to <clears throat> make sure I don't interfere with some of the hold downs. Um, and I've actually got something in store to match the angle I did on the table saw for these little card holders back here too. So we'll go over to the table and see what that is. Quarter inch end mill. For this next cut, I'm doing something on my CNC I've never done before. I've actually propped the back end to match that angle as best I can. And so on this straight pass with my 1 8 inch bit, um, it will, as far as the machine knows, it's just going to be a, a straight cut to it, but really it's going to be putting that vertical cut at an angle to the actual piece. And to accomplish this too, being that I've got one here and then one an inch and a half this direction they have two different z heights so what i've done is i've zeroed the z height to this exact spot where it's going to be passing the first time and then uh it'll do that pass and before i do the second one i'll re-zero the z height to this plane right here or this line i suppose and uh, hopefully both those depths will be a half an inch. I'm not gonna lie. That worked way better than expected. I mean, I guess I expected it to work well, but seriously, half inch depth, almost perfectly at both spots. The angle, exactly what I wanted. Here's the CNC one. Ready to be cut in half and finished. Boom. Two down, one to go. Here's my layout for the jigsaw half. So I'm going to make the holes in just one half, then glue it together, then saw the kerf into it. Anticipating that I won't be able to make the one inch radius with my jigsaw, because I'm not that skilled with my jigsaw, I went ahead and drew the two inch squares in circles into squares. I'm going to make one hole in each of them with this and see what I can do. Here we go. <laughs> All right.
Just a slight snafu when using the jigsaw on that last one. You may have seen me go totally haywire. And yeah, my jigsaw skills, not great. So I just laid out a new board, and this time I put holes in all four corners of, of uh, each laid out, I suppose, hole. And um, now I can just hopefully straight line connect each one. It should leave a decent radius in each corner. I purposely did not plane this board just yet um, as I realize it's going to leave a pretty rough surface and I'll plane them after they're cut and hopefully clean up some of that tear out. So that didn't end up being too bad. I should uh, definitely work on some of my freehand cutting skills, but um, workable. Ah, uh, more tragedy. Headed through the planer, the blades hit a weak spot. Sad day. Gobbled up a little piece right there. Uh, this one was never really going to look very pretty anyway, so all I'm going to do is cut a, a small piece to glue there in its place. Uh, I was thinking about just scrapping this whole half, but I really want six total pieces because with the expansion pack for the game, you could play up to six players. Um, it would only make sense to do these in sets of like four or six. Five, um, you know, if you're playing with the full expansion and all players, then one person sits out without a holder set. So we're going to try and salvage this. At this point, as they were coming off the table saw, it occurred to me that I should probably add some kind of decorative edge. So I added a 90 degree chamfer to all the edges, which you'll see later. But first, Anders had the brilliant idea to add a little bit of laser flare. So here we are putting on a logo. Oh yeah. Ah, Is it gonna make it? No, it didn't. No, it's in the crack. And unfortunately, as you just saw, the first couple of alignments didn't really work out as planned, but no big deal. So here's one of them, just before getting a couple coats of lacquer to finish them up. So we have not been able to release much content lately, but we can't thank enough our supporters over at Patreon, Kim and Garrett Make It, and Moody Woodcarving. And of course, you, the viewer, thanks so much for sticking with us. Hope to see you next time. Table slaw. The cold the cold table, table slaw, table saw. <laughs> Do it.